Everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your 1 p.m. market update for Wednesday, the 23rd of November. So I said October for November, the day before Turkey Day or Thanksgiving Day here in the States. You know, before I go any further, I just want to ask you if ask, ask yourself, yourself this is one-on-one -on -one market club coaching is right for you. These are very tough markets for a lot of traders, and sometimes having a one-on-one -on -one coach can really make a difference. It can save you a lot of money. I can guarantee you that. It's a free consultation and a free phone call. So give us a call at 877-219-1482 and see if it's right for you. You can find out all about the program. And it is personal, one-on-one -on -one market club coaching. I think you'll see it makes a difference into your bottom line, which is important. So, hey, three big turkeys, Congress, Europe, and John Corzine. You know, there's no doubt about it. 2011 is shaping up to be the year of the turkeys with all the major markets lower for the year. 2011 is turning out to be not such a bad year for buy and hold investors. As of this writing, all the major indices are lower in the U.S. with the S&P down over 5%. The current scenario reminds me of what Will Rogers, a very famous American hum humorist, had to say almost 70 years ago, and it goes like this. I am more concerned about the return of my capital than the return on my capital. We couldn't agree more. We certainly feel that our trade trial technology, which alerted investors almost a week ago that conditions were getting very skittish in the markets and either to be totally out or short the equity markets. In fact, our monthly trade trial indicator on the S&P 500 flashed an exit signal on August 2nd at 1,258. We have been effectively out of the market for long-term traders since that date almost four months ago. Last week's tr weekly trade trial signal indicated that the bear trend was beginning to accelerate on the downside. As, As we, we say almost, almost every day here, the markets speak the truth and eventually they, the markets, will make the changes that are needed. Now let's go to the charts and the video and see how we can create and maintain your wealth in 2011. So, as I say, give us a call. It's a free consultation, 877-219-1482, and the call is free also. Let's go to our tapes. We're also going to do some, some very cool things. things. We're going to be covering a number of ETFs today. We had a lot of requests for ETFs, and we're going to be looking at those ETFs. As you can see, I'm going to go to the Portfolio Manager. I've already got some ETFs in here. We're talking about the Doug, which is ProShares Ultra Short Oil, the EUO, ProShares Ultra Short the Euro, and SDS, ProShares Ultra, Ultra Short the S&P 500. I'm going to show you where those signals came in. We're also going to be looking at the Spot Euro, Cash Euro on the currencies, on the Forex markets, and you'll get an idea of where that market's trading right now, and that's real time. So let's go to our first market, which is the S&P 500, and you'll see right away this market's under a lot of pressure today. This, this is going to be the sixth day in a row the market's closed lower. Can it go lower? It's going to depend. We're closed tomorrow in, for trading in the U.S. The question is, who wants to go home long this market closing like this? I don't know how it's going to close today, but certainly it's not acting that well. We've got, we're, we're very heavily oversold. oversold. We're seeing some light volume, obviously, but the MACD is still very negative and still showing momentum going down. Our, we're below the parabolic, the PSAR, and all of our indicators are negative. Now, the one potential we could see some stability around these levels, levels is this, and that is if we just take our Fibonacci tool, drag it down here, and it shows that the 1158, 1160 area is pretty much where a 61%, 61.8% retracement could come back. So that's going to be an area certainly to look at. But nonetheless, the trend is clearly down. And, and I, I think, think we, we can see perhaps some further uh, weakness. So it's not to say that Fibonacci is going to stop the market cold. It, it may not do that at all. It depends on how much fear comes into the market with Europe and, of course, what's going on in other parts of the world. I mean, interest rates in Europe to fund debt to fund the banks, it's skyrocketing. So that's something to definitely be concerned about. So let's go to our next market. That's going to be spot silver. And silver had a very strong day yesterday, but it's sort of given it back today. We're still in this sort of five, six day range, trading range. It's really a minus 75. It looks like it wants to go into a bear trend, but it's not there yet. And I think this is very telling the fact that this market has been really kind of flat since September 25th. And here we are, November 20th, almost a month, actually more than that, uh, almost two months later. So I think it's really important to see this market's making flat. We want it to very, very carefully. Certainly, we've, we've outlined the resistance zones 
uh, mm -hmm. blog today on that market. So let's go to our next market. Next market's going to be gold, of course. And gold had an update, sort of we've, we've flirted here, but it's beginning to, it's a minus 60, which is our weekly and daily on negative, meaning it's a trading range right now. It hasn't really gotten up and moving higher. Our monthly is still long from 14.30, so long-term investors, traders should stay with this position, should not be out of it, but short-term investors should probably be on their sidelines or just trading it using the tools we have below. That's the Williams Percent R and the MACD. And I think for the moment, uh, where we close, we're certainly lower for the week. And uh, we may be, uh, we've got Friday coming in, which is obviously a very short trading day. But remember, this market's going to be trading tomorrow and tonight and on Friday. So there's a lot to be careful about. But generally speaking, there's a little bit on a trading range side with the minus 60 reading. So next market we're looking at is copper. And copper is down today. Uh, minus 90 is strong downtrend. We've been talking about this. You may remember we talked about the 350 area being a very negative area going through there. We've obviously gone through that level. The market's lower all the week. And it really is reflecting the economic conditions, but it's also reflecting our trade trials. Our trade trials really are, it's an algorithm, but it really reflects the demands of the market. And as we say, you know, we always say, well, listen to the market uh, because it tells you what's going on, really tells you what's going on. So as you scope this down, you can see we're very heavily oversold. Uh, we could be oversold for quite some time, as a matter of fact, two or three weeks uh, before this thing recovers. But generally speaking, we, its signals are negative on this market. And it would be only thing that's going to change this market is a short covering rally. That's about it for now, because generally speaking, the trend is clearly on the downside. downside. Next market is going to be the crude oil market. Now, this is be turning out to be an interesting market. It's minus plus 65. So we're sort of in a trading range right now. And I think that uh, we've, we pushed down. I think we close, I think we were looking if we close below 96, we're 9679 right now. Uh, we would see further the downside, downside pressure. But generally speaking, speaking it will look as though this market is topped out for the time being. We have mixed signals. Short term, it's a little bit negative. But longer term, it looks like it wants to go higher. So this could be a trade to look at maybe once we stabilize around these levels below $100. So let's see how that plays out. Next market, we've got a lot of markets to cover today. That's why I'm going through these a little faster than I would normally do. Next market is going to be the dollar index. As you, as we talked about this, it's very bullish on this market. Everyone's coming in to buy dollars, get out of other currencies. It's plus 100. As we said, it's a bull trend. And as I put my telestrator on here, I'll show you what we've been talking about. We felt this is a a very large, oh, let me just turn this off here. We felt this is a very large energy field, which was capable of carrying this market higher. And so you with this this type of scenario, and that's the that's the area it really broke out of 78 and a half. So can the market go high? Yes, I could see this market going quite a bit higher. Maybe we're certainly looking for this level to be hit, which is right around the 80 level. And I think that we may see that happening. Uh, let me write that a little clearer. I think we could see that happening perhaps as early as Friday or certainly early next week. But I think that's going to at least hold the market for the time being. But generally speaking, the energy base here is capable of carrying it a little bit higher than that. So we'll see how things play out. But generally speaking, the trend is clearly up, breaking over the 78.50 area. And we look for this market to go higher. So. Next market is going to be the CRB, Reuters Jeffrey CRB Commodity Index. And you're seeing a couple of things happening. You're seeing a couple of doji lines here, which may indicate that we're making a bottom, but our trend is clearly negative. And there's no reason to get excited about buying this market for the time being, other than for a very fast turn. I would not recommend that. We are oversold. And I th again, we could be oversold for a period of several weeks. Uh, so I wouldn't be rushing to buy anything right now. And you've got the MACD negative as well as our all of our trade triangles. So I think for the time being, this market's going to continue to be somewhat on the defensive. And we are looking, we were looking for this market, uh, certainly the 305 level was our interim target zone. We got as low as 306.17 today. And I think that's we're still going to be looking at the 305 level and the 300 level as support that was seen back at these levels. So let's see how that plays out. Now, going back into our markets, we're looking at the ProShares Ultra Short Oil. This is 
symbol is DUG, you see a plus 100, so I mean a very strong upward trend. And you can see today we broke over and we have all plus 100. Now this is a triple uh, ultra short uh, ETF. It's traded, uh, as you can see, uh, quite it's not quite as liquid as some of the other ETFs, but it trades about a million, two million shares a day. And uh, you can see, well, there you go. We've been as high as four, three million. So I would say somewhere in the region of maybe a million to a million and a half shares a day. And certainly today's action uh, was if we put our trade triangles in our weekly trade tri triangles, boom, you can see right today at 30 was the buy point. It's currently trading at 30.72. So you'd be buying just a little bit higher, but it could be the start of a trend. And also, if we look at this on a Fibonacci zone, we could be seeing this market trade back to the 35 area, which is a 50 percent, 32.70 is a 38 percent. So that's a two dollar move, a about a two and a half dollar three move, actually about a four dollar move here and change. And then you've got possibly a seven dollar move coming up here. Uh, but generally speaking, the trend is clearly up. I think any kind of pullback in this market is going to be met with some pretty good support. And remember, this tracks oil and gas. So it's saying everything's a plus 100, and we have to respect those trade triangles. If we go further down, you'll see that we're just, we have turned on the MACD, and that looks good too. So it looks like it wants to go higher. So let's go to our next market. Next, next market is going to be the euro. And this is the symbol is EUO. It's a plus 100, meaning this is the inverse. When this market goes up, it means the dollar is going up and the euro is going down. So you can clearly see we've broken up to the upside, very similar to the dollar index, but uh, just for, for the, the euro, euro itself, <coughs> excuse me, it's plus 100, which is a very good sign. And uh, you can see the weekly signal came in here. And I think that's indicating that we're going to see this market go higher. I could see the 17 to 19. I could see it's up at 21 in this market. It would be up here somewhere. But I think, generally speaking, the trend is clearly up. And any pullback is going to be met with good support. Now, we're also going to be looking at the currency itself the, on the Forex markets, the euro. And I'll show you some things there as well. So let's go back to our market. And let's go to the euro next because that will freshen our minds. And you can see the euro. It's minus 100. The inverse was the EUO, which is plus 100, perfectly in sync. This is a, not a good sign breaking down below this lows, the level here, which is around the 35 area, uh, 3475. Let's just get, get the exact number. The low was 3430. Going below there, there was not a good sign. We're at 3361. This is real time. It looks as though it wants to go lower. All of our trade trials are minus 100. And I think no one's going to be wanting to fake this out for the weekend, uh, for the long weekend, I should say, the holiday weekend here in the States. A lot of traders will be taking off and not coming in on Friday. So, so let's see what happens uh, with that market. The last market we're going to be looking at, of course, is going to be the SDS, which is, again, this is ultra short. Uh, it's short the S&P 500. And you can see this also moved up into a very positive position. So if we could look at this and we just let's take a look at the Fibonacci and just take, take a look, look and see where we are in this. So we could see this market. We've certainly seen the first retracement. We could go back to the 2362, which is a 50% retracement, and 2471, which is a 61.8% retracement. So there's still some room on the upside, um, but it looks to me like the market certainly wants to, to do, do better. better. But uh, let's see how that plays out. You've got a good base here. You've got everything with the exception of the monthly. Now, again, on the monthly, if you look at the S&P 500 itself, you have everything in a red column. And you know, let me just do that right now for you. So sometimes the ETS can be a little bit tricky because, because they, they underperform and overperform sometimes the actual asset they're tracking. In this case, it's the S&P 500. You see all our triangles are red. And I would take your lead from this and not just the SDS. So, hey, this is Adam Hewson. We covered a lot of ground. We covered the ETFs today, the Euro, and the uh, Doug, and a couple of other markets. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll try, to we'll try to continue to include these ETFs in our commentary. And again, 
give us a call. It's a free consultation, 877-219-1482. The call is free and the consultation is free. And we'll do our very best to share with you how you can improve your trading with Market Club's one-on-one coaching. So everyone in the States, have a great turkey day tomorrow. There'll be no update tomorrow. We're going to try and get an update for you on Friday. It depends. They're doing some uh, work in our building, so we may not have power. So again, we'll try to get one up on Friday and again on Saturday. So if you're tuned in then, uh, please uh, watch us, and we'll do our very best to bring you up to date with what's going on in Europe. And also, of course, what's going on here in the States. Hey, Adam Hewison, have a great Turkey Day, Thanksgiving Day holiday. And for those of you who are not in the States who are watching this, have a great trading day.